It's my pleasure to introduce today's Joan Seminar speaker. Uh, today we have uh, Dr. David Cohen. Uh, he pioneered the field of uh, the study of biomagnetism, which is uh, the study of magnetic fields produced by the body. Uh, he's made many of the first instruments <coughs> in this field. In uh, 1969, uh, Dr. Cohen built an elaborate shielded room at MIT, uh, but needed a more uh, sensitive detector to measure these magnetic fields. Uh, James, James Zimmerman had just developed an extremely sensitive detector called the SQUID, or superconducting, superconducting quantum interference device. Uh, Dr. Cohen and Zimmerman set up this detector in the new room to look at the heart's uh, the magnetic fields from the heart, or the magnetocardiogram. And for the first time, the signals were clear, and the resulting report, often called the Magna Carta of biomagnetism, ushered in a new era in the field of biomagnetism. Dr. Cohen then measured the first clear signal from the brain, or the magnetoencephalogram, or MEG. Uh, Cohen has worked uh, continuously in the field of biomagnetism throughout his career. He's authored many publications, mostly concerning the MEG, and has been called the father of the MEG. Uh, he remains active, is on the faculty at the Harvard Medical School, and is a member of the MEG group at the Martino Center for Biomedical Imaging, which is located at Massachusetts General Hospital. Please join me in welcoming Dr. David. Thanks, Saul. Well, you all look, listen, I live in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and you look very nice compared to any crowd you see in Cambridge, <laughs> Massachusetts, I'll tell you. I'm in a pretty respectable place, I think. Um, well, I'm glad to be here, and I'm honored to be a Jones lecturer. Um, let me first give the definition of uh, biomagnetism. If any living thing, like a human body, gives a magnetic field out, that's called biomagnetism. We're not going to be talking about what happens when you apply a magnetic field to the body. That's called magnetobiology. I don't go near that. That's something else entirely. So as long as we know what we're talking about. Now the um, magnetic, the body, the human body produces a magnetic field in two ways. One, the natural ion currents in the body, the same currents from the heart that give you the electrocardiogram, give you a magnetic field outside the chest called the magnetocardiogram. The same electric currents, ion currents in the brain, that give you the EEG electroencephalogram, give you a magnetic field outside the brain called the magnetoencephalogram. That's one way. The other way are particles. You can breathe in magnetic dust into your lungs, junk, and you can magnetize that junk and that'll give you a magnetic field. So those are the two main ways. Let's see a little more about that. Okay, now about currents. Let this be a blob of conductor, a piece of arm, a piece of hand, a piece of brain, anything, a big blob of a, let's say, salt water conductor. And let this be a generator, a piece of muscle or nerve, and that's going to give you currents. Let that be active. So that gives these currents, these thin lines, in the conductor. Those currents make a magnetic field coming outside this big heavy line. That's how the body makes a magnetic field by currents. These same currents also give you a potential on the surface that you can measure. But right now we're interested in the magnetic field. So that's how currents in the body give you an external magnetic field. That's the basic idea. Now particles, mostly we're going to be talking about currents, but uh, a little bit about particles. Now, oh, further, 
the currents, if you just made that picture of the brain, that's what that same picture would look like here. Except the generator out now, we have it drawn as a red arrow. That's generating, these are the currents, uh, never mind the letters. And these currents make a magnetic field, this big blue arrow. That's being measured by some sort of coil. And that also gives potential on the head called the EEG. Now let's go to particles. Now supposing the subject on the right breathes in magnetic dust. You can magnetize that dust by putting a big magnet over the chest. And what will happen will be that the lung will become magnetic and make these magnetic lines. The lung becomes kind of a weak magnet. So that's the way the body makes its magnetic fields if you breathe in magnetic dust. Now these fields in the body are very, very weak. Let's see how weak they are. We're going to use the units of Gauss. You know, magnetic fields are expressed in either Gauss or Tesla. I prefer right now to use the units of Gauss. Here's the Earth's field, 10 to the 0 Gauss. The Earth's field is about half a Gauss. Then, then you get the urban noise that's fluctuating noise here due to the elevators. Then the magnetic particles in the lung give you a field of about 10 to the minus 5 Gauss really a lot smaller than the Earth's field. The human heart gives you about one millionth of a Gauss. Down you go. The noise of one of the detectors, we can forget about that. Skeletal muscle gives you a magnetic field down here. The human brain, the alpha rhythm is here. And the last thing is the squid detector, the static, the internal squid static of the very sensitive detector. So you see, to to measure a magnetic field here, you need that detector, a very sensitive detector, and you also have to have some way of getting rid of, let's say, if you're measuring the fluctuating field of the heart, some way of getting rid of the urban noise. You've got to get rid of external fields. We're measuring very small fields. So again, the detector is, pardon this crummy slide, this is a superconducting gadget here. This thing is about an inch or two, two inches across. That's a superconducting wire going to this gadget. That goes out to some electronics. This is liquid helium. This is a liquid helium doer, and that's the vacuum space here. That's all it is. A squid detector is that. That's one channel squid detector, the most sensitive detector in the world. Sorry about this crummy slide. I like it. Uh, and we'll go to now here's my old shielded room at MIT subject is sitting there getting measured with one squid detector at the head he wears no magnetic material you can't have any steel on your body and he's getting his brain measured and um, by one channel um, so Now, biomagnetism has some special jokes that I hope will keep you awake. Here's one of them. Sorry about that. <laughs> Chamber eliminates the Gauss word. I apologize, but that's how it goes. Now, now let's fast forward to what are systems like today. Okay, that was a long time ago. That was in 1970, 71, something like that. One channel. Now, here we have a state-of-the-art system costing three million bucks. Here is the doer in here, liquid helium doer. There are 306 channels around the head. That's called a whole head system. A helmet over the head. 306 channels and uh, they are um, that small inset shows what's inside the doer. 